Hey, I thought I'd update people on the modding slash, I guess you can call it, cheating process for Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. Now, this game's kind of in a unique spot because they give you all those, uh, you know, microtransaction time saver DLCs for free. So, this isn't really a game you need to cheat on. However, there are some cool ways to actually change how the game is played. So, that is what I'm going to be covering today. So, there's a couple things here. Let me uh, go ahead and enlarge this so you guys can read it. One of the things that's nice to use uh, if you have access to the PC version is the art usage multiplier. Uh, basically, when you use a move a certain amount of times, usually it's like 200 times, uh, some moves actually take even more than that, then the properties will change. So if you don't want to deal with that, you can actually put on the multiplier. So by default, it's on a, a 10 times multiplier, meaning that every time you use that move, uh, it will count for 10 uses. Now, uh, also, apparently you get a 3 times damage boost if you max it out at 9,999. So, if you're planning on doing a, a solo run and you want it to be, you know, accurate, then uh, you probably would want to put the multiplier on 10,000 and just do everything once that way. However, I usually put it on 5, so go ahead and change that right now. And when I go back into the game, you'll notice that the multiplier is active. There are also some other things as well. Uh, you can quick gain skills, but however, with the second thing I'll be talking about that may not be necessary, the rest of this stuff is kind of whatever. Uh, there's also one I have not downloaded which allows you to use the Great Shop options on the first playthrough. Uh, that would definitely be something for people who have put an extensive amount of time into either or the uh, PS3 or 360 version. So if you just want to go straight into uh, you know a solo run kind of environment, then you can definitely do that right away. You can also give yourself money as well. I don't really see the point in that. <laughs> I, I use the, the Time Saver DLC and I haven't had any issues at all. Now what's interesting here is uh, someone made a new cheat engine table today that allows you to choose which skills you want to unlock. Uh, there is one that allows you to just put all the skills on everybody, but obviously that adds a lot of clutter and uh, also there will be a lot of skills that just are plain not compatible with the character. So I don't know if that makes the game crash or not. I don't have any kind of uh, SP modifiers on right now, so it's kind of difficult to test. Uh, when I get to the second playthrough, I'll definitely put more extensive testing. But for now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give Yuri a universal backstep cancel. One of the biggest complaints a lot of the newest players have with this game is that it is very stiff. Uh, it does feel unresponsive, especially at the beginning. Uh, the free run cancel helps, but it is kind of awkward because you always have to push it in the direction you're moving. So sometimes you have to run towards the enemy to be able to have that extra flexibility you know, and to reduce the recovery, recovery of your moves. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show how that's done. So you click on character data, and then uh, you guys can't see it, but there will be a uh, pop-up window for the character you want to give the uh, skill to. So I click that, and then you'll see the skills here. So it's got all of them here, so if you just want to straight up cheat and uh, not bother with acquiring the weapon and getting the LP and stuff, you can do that, but I'm going to use it for something more useful, which is just to uh, give someone a step cancel. So it's got every skill in the game here. Like I said, some of these may not be compatible, so you can use this at your own risk. Uh, I would recommend doing it on an extra save. I have not done a ton of testing on this, but you know you can always just make a duplicate of the same save, and if something goes wrong, you can go back. So let me find the step cancel here. All right, so here it is. So you click that, and then you click on the the value and you change it from locked to unlocked. So if I go back into the game you'll see that he has it right here. Now I'll have to take off some stuff because I, I'm still I'm about halfway through the game at this point. But go ahead and put that on and then I'm gonna put on uh, step away as well. Actually, called the landing step. Turn the music back on. Okay, so I had to make a quick edit because when I actually showed the step counts are working, I still had the cheat engine window up. So <laughs> let me go ahead and fix that right now. So ideally, you would probably want to add a guard cancel as well. Uh, that way. 
you can get into the the back step a little quicker, a little quicker. But other than that, it works fine. And there you have it. Uh, like I said, you're going to be pretty uh, strapped for SP at the beginning of the game. However, this is definitely the, the more optimal way to use this cheat engine table because otherwise you'll run out of points really quickly. Also, if you give everyone every skill, it's going to add a ton of clutter. Uh, even though you'll be able to make everything cost 1 SP in your second or third playthrough, uh, you're still just going to have a bunch of stuff that's straight up not compatible with your character. So, I would recommend doing some testing. Like I said, go ahead and make uh, separate saves and test things out that way. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of SP to work with unless you decide to, you know, cheat further <laughs> and give yourself unlimited SP. But if you just want to make the game more responsive, this is actually a great option. I will go ahead and put the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Peace.